Hey there, welcome to the video on uh, the orbital properties of Mars. We're going to learn a few new terms in this uh, video just to kind of get us used to orbital property terms. And the first one is superior orbit. So Earth is the third planet from the Sun, which means there's two closer planets, and they have what's considered inferior orbits. All the planets that are farther from the Sun than our planet are considered to have superior orbits. So superior orbit is an orbit that lies farther away from the Sun than the Earth's orbit. Uh, in this picture, it might be a little confusing to look at it at first because there's a lot of stuff going on in here, but focus right now on Earth's orbit right here. See the little blue Earth? And Mars's orbit here, little reddish Mars. right? And so uh, Mars is in a superior orbit. Looking at eyes in the solar system, I'm just going to call it eyes from now on. So looking at eyes, you can see Mars right here in uh, su superior orbit, superior position compared to Earth, Earth's orbit, and then the two inferior uh, orbits for Ver Venus and Mercury. We also have two other terms, conjunction and opposition. So conjunction is when a planet is in the same direction as the sun, which sounds a little confusing at first because um, it appears as though the planet is on the opposite side of the sun, and so people often confuse that with opposition. But if you're standing here on Earth and you look towards the sun and Mars is on the other side of the sun, then you'll see Mars at the same time. A little hard to see it from this picture, but let's take a look at it through eyes. So first off, let's um, get the system to the point where Mars is on the opposite side of the sun as us. So we got to go a little bit and, oh, getting close. Here's Earth, Sun, and Mars. Now let's um, zoom into Earth. So click once and click again to zoom in. And look at the sun as if we are standing on Earth or maybe in a little spaceship orbiting Earth. So it's taking a little while to load, but okay, there we go. So you can see um, we would be standing on the day side of Earth. This is night and day if we were to see the sun. And you can see Mars is pretty close to the sun. It's not quite in full uh, conjunction yet. If we go uh, it's getting farther. We've got to go forward in time. Oh, you can actually see our moon, too, orbiting around. Whoa, whoa! So the Earth is spinning crazy fast like that. That means each each time it spins around once is one day. So, And you can see Mars is getting closer and closer to the Sun. Let's get that a little more centered. Oops. No! There we go. If you want to even... If you want to flatten the solar system, you got to kind of rotate it a little bit. It's a little weird. But if you get dizzy, because I do that, that's all I'm doing is I'm trying to flatten out the solar system. So let's go forward a little more. Right there. See how Mars and the Sun are almost overlapping? Um, that means Mars is in the same direction as the Sun when we look at the Sun. So we're looking at the Sun and Mars is in the same direction. Even though it's on the opposite side of the Sun as us, it's in the same direction as the Sun. So that's conjunction. Uh, and on this picture again you can see uh, here's us on Earth, here's the here's Sun, and here's Mars over here at point A, point A, and, or at time A, time A, and you look this way you see the Sun and Mars. What happens though at time B when Mars is um, closer to us, but on the opposite side of us than the Sun. So that's that's where the opposition comes in. It's when a planet is on the opposite side of us than the Sun. So here's us, the Sun's on this side, Mars is on this side. Uh, one thing to notice is during conjunction, Mars is up during the day. So we can't really see Mars because the Sun is too bright, it makes the sky too bright. But when Mars is at opposition or around opposition, then we see Mars at night because the sun is already set from our point of view. So let's take a look at that in eyes real quick. Let's go back out to solar system view. Solar system, go. And zoom in a little 
little bit. And quickly make Mars and Earth on opposite sides of the sun. So let's just do... Whoa! whoa okay. Getting close. Getting close. Oh! A little too far. E there we go. Ah, that looks pretty good. So we got Earth here, the sun on this side of the Earth, Mars on this side. So let's zoom in on Earth again, and we can see that we see Mars during the night. So if we're on this side of the planet during the day, we see the sun that way. But if we're on this side of the planet during the night, look at that. This would be nighttime in the U.S. Here's a, a North and South America. So we're about here. If we look up in the night sky, we should see Mars. There it is. Mars at night. So you might get dizzy again. I'm going to flatten out the solar system. There we go. So yeah, uh, Mars is up at night and the sun is behind us now. So that's opposition when a planet is on the opposite side of us than the sun. What else we got going on here? Um, oh, orbital properties, eccentricity. So you might have seen this in maybe geometry or one of, one of your math classes. Um, an ellipse is uh, the general shape of a conic section where a circle is a more specific, unique shape. Uh, a circle is when you have zero eccentricity, meaning it's not stretched out like an egg. It's perfectly round. If you start to stretch it out like an egg, then you, you have an eccentricity that's greater than one, greater than zero, but less than one. And all of the orbits, all of all of the planet orbits are actually ellipses. None of them are perfect circles, even though they look pretty circular. Uh, this is not really important, but just to let you know if you're curious what happens when e equals one, you get a parabola. Basically, you stretch out stretch out your ellipse so far that it's almost like you break, you snap one end, and it kind of opens up and becomes a parabola instead. These go off to infinity. So uh, Mars's eccentricity is 0 0.093. You can see it's very close to zero, much closer to zero than one. Um, so it looks pretty small. And in fact, when you look at Mars's orbit, let's go back to solar system view. When you look at Mars's orbit, it, it looks like a circle, pretty much. It's kind of hard to tell with these other. Uh, planets kind of distracting you, but if you try to focus on Mars's red orbit here, it looks pretty circular. But it is uh, an ellipse, and in fact it's one of the larger ellipses uh, compared to most of the planets in our solar system. Earth's is quite a bit smaller and more more closer to a circle. And so this, this has a, a big effect on some things as we'll discuss in a, in a bit. But um, so that's what eccentricity is. Where's the eyes? Here we go. Another thing to notice real quick is that if you try to focus on Earth's orbit, it's, hi it's highlighted now, right? See? Highlighted. So focus on the Earth's orbit and the Sun. The Sun looks pretty darn close to the center of the circle. I would say the center is maybe up here just a tiny bit for Earth's orbit, but it's pretty close to the center. Mars, on the other hand, is not. that's not the case. Uh, for Mars's orbit, the sun is quite a bit off center, so there's one point in the year. Let's go look at this again. Um, one point in the year where uh, Mars is quite a bit closer to the sun. In this case, 1.38 AU, which we're going to discuss what that AU is in a sec, versus 1.67 AU on the other side. So uh, Mars's orbit is not very centered around the sun, and it, that gives it some interesting weather patterns, as we'll discuss. So we need to talk about two terms in terms of how close you are to the sun. Perihelion is when a planet is closest to the sun in its orbit. And again, on this confusing picture with lots of information, Mars is at perihelion here. So this is the closest distance to the sun. Again, 1.38 AU. Um, aphelion is when a planet is farthest from the sun in its orbit. And so that's typically on the other side. And so here, um, when Mars is here in its orbit, it's 1.67 AU away. And um, so yeah, so these are two orbital position terms you'll need to know. And again, here are the distances. Mars's aphelion is 1.38 AU. Uh, sorry, perihelion. And Mars's aphelion is 1.67 AU. So what is an AU? 
Uh, an AU is short or abbreviated for astronomical unit, and an astronomical unit is the distance from the Earth to the Sun. Uh, we we consider that we consider the Earth's distance to be one AU. So from here to here is one AU. From here to here is one AU, and it's not perfect. That's it's kind of an average because again the Earth's orbit is an elliptical orbit, and so it's never always the same distance from the Sun. Um, but if Earth's if the distance from the Earth to the Sun is one AU then you can see that Mars doesn't quite get twice as far away. It's in here it's one and a third uh, one and two thirds times far as far away. Um, but it is farther away. And if you take a look, uh, the distance between Mars and Earth at, at their closest approach, if Mars is here and Earth is here, is 0.37 AU, like a third of an AU, a little bit more than a third. And at their farthest distance apart, Mars is um, 0.67 AU farther from from the Earth. Anyway, so that's that's um, a little bit more in terms of the orbital properties. This large distance between perihelion and aphelion means that uh, sunlight is almost 45 percent more intense when Mars is closer to the Sun. So at this point, um, if you look up in, if you look up into the sky, um, Mar if you're standing on Mars and you look up into the sky and look at the sun, uh, the sun's going to be quite a bit brighter than if you were over here at aphelion and look up at, at the sky. 45% more brighter. And that also leads to some interesting weather, weather effects. Uh, and finally, when Mars is closest to us, that's like between that's these two points, or in fact, basically any two points where you know, B and B, where they're on the same side of the sun, uh, it's brighter than any star. I have a little video here that shows that. Right now, Earth and Mars are kind of just about on opposite sides of the sun, and so Mars looks about this big, and it's not as bright as it would be. But at, when I start this, when I play this, watch the orbits, and Earth is going to eventually catch up to Mars. And as it happens, you're going to see Mars get bigger here, and even though we can't really see Mars get bigger from Earth like this, this is what we would see through a telescope, we can see Mars get brighter. So let's take a look. So we're catching up to Mars. You can see it's getting a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger here, until the point where we get right... Oops, I went a little too far, but you can see Mars and Earth are really close now. Not as close as they could be. It looks like here and here would be the very, very closest, and that changes, you know, depending on where uh, the planets are in the orbit. But look how big Mars looks, and that would be brighter than any star in the sky at that point, and red too. So you can easily see uh, Mars in the sky; it's a reddish, bright star. And then it's going to get smaller again as we move ahead of Mars and get farther away, smaller, 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 to the point where we're just about as far away as possible. It keeps getting smaller. And then we'll catch up again, and um, it'll start getting bigger again, as you can see here. All right, um, so that pretty much does it for orbit orbital properties of Mars. Uh, if you have any questions on any of this stuff, you can always ask me in class. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. Until the next video, see you next time.